Hello and welcome to the Mithril Money Securities Investment 101 course. This is lecture 12, Introducing Yield to Maturity. Now we're going to need to do at least three lectures on yield to maturity. It's quite a complex area, but this lecture is just going to be about the conceptual kind of features of yield to maturity. Let's quickly draw up a bond. So here's a piece of paper and it says on it a face value of 100, a coupon rate of 4% and it's maturing in three years time. So far, so good. Let's draw the timeline for this then. So there's year one, there's year two, and there's year three. Everyone okay so far? Year one, year two, year three. Now with the flat yield, you might remember from the previous video, we didn't care at all about anything after that point. The only thing we cared about was the first year. And if you look at those figures on the left there in that bond, you can see that we're going to get a coupon there for $4. Now let's say that we paid $100 for this bond. Well, that would give us a flat yield of four divided by 100 equals 4%. So a flat yield of 4% in that particular case. And we do not care about anything beyond that point there with the flat yield. Now, another interesting case happens when we pay $95 for the particular bond. Well, in this case, we still get the same $4, but this time to get the flat yield, we divide by 95. And if you remember from the last video, that came back at a flat yield rate of 4.21%. So it's slightly more, it's slightly more because we're getting four, but we're only paying 95. The other important case comes when we pay over the odds and we go for a premium bond, let's say at $105. And this time the flat yield is going to be four because we get the same coupon divided by 105. And if you remember from the last video, that came back to be a flat yield rate of 3.81%. Just note that there. What about these other two years? This is the problem that we need to solve. There's other things going on here that we need to take into account into what you might call an overall yield rate. And the name for this overall yield rate is typically yield to maturity. Now, some people in the UK call this gross redemption yield, but most people know this as yield to maturity or YTM. And that will go all the way up to maturity and it will take into account these two years here. Let's just rub that out there and we'll just move this over to there. Now let's take all three cases then. So if we spend a hundred, we get back four here and now we are taking into account these other payments and we get a four dollar coupon at the end there as well. But of course we also get back the capital value. We get back the hundred at the end. So let's just put that in there too. We get the $100 back. And what we'll find is if we pay $100 and we get back $100, there's been no capital loss or no capital gain on the original investment. We've got the three interest payments. We've got the capital investment, and then we've got the capital return. And because the capital return and the capital investment are the same, what we'll find is that not only is the coupon rate 4% and the flat yield rate 4%. We'll also find later on in the next couple of lectures that the yield to maturity will also be 4% because there's no capital loss and no capital gain on the initial $100 invested. We've got the interest payments of 4% and that's pretty much it. Now, the interesting cases occur above and below the line. Let's go back to this paying price of 95. Notice what's happening here. We're paying 95, but we're going to get back 100. So the initial capital investment is 95 and the capital return over here is 100. Therefore, there has been a growth of $5 in our invested capital, as well as getting these three interest payments. We've also kind of got a sort of extra $5 coupon at the end in year three at maturity. So yield to maturity goes all the way to the end to maturity. So we take that into account and we'll show you how to do that again in the next couple of lectures. So what we'll find there is we'll find that not only is the flat yield higher than the coupon rate, the yield to maturity in this case will also be significantly higher. It will be 5.87% and if that all seems a bit mysterious, I will show you exactly how that's calculated in Excel in the next couple of lectures. So the yield to maturity 
because we're getting this extra five will increase. What about this top case here then? What about this paying 105? Are we going to get back 105? No, we're going to get back just the 100 again. So this is a depreciation. The 95 was a capital appreciation. The 105 is a capital depreciation. We're only going to get back 100 along with the three interest payments. So we need to take into account this loss of five. Let me just put the dollar symbol on there to make sure that we know it's money, real money. It could be $5 million, of course. So we're losing money here. And we need to take that into account. Now, the flat yield took it into a little bit of account because... You know, dividing 4 by 105 gives us 3.81. But we'll see later on that the yield to maturity has really taken a hit here. The yield to maturity in this case is 2.26%. You know, it's really dropping down. Coupon rate 4%, flat yield 3.81%, yield to maturity 2.26%. Taking into account this loss of $5. Now, in the next couple of videos, I will show you exactly where that number comes from and exactly what it means we'll also be pricing bonds and we'll be able to use a tool called goal seek to be able to find things out and we'll use a few of the tips and tricks in excel to help you figure out how to price bonds and how to work out the yield of bonds but i think that's enough for now see you next time